Hello, and welcome to the SFCA podcast. Our goal is to inspire travel. We want to expose you to what Miami and South Florida has to offer. From Key Biscayne to Coconut Grove, South Beach to Calle Ocho and everywhere in between. Miami is a vibrant city and offers a wide array of popular attractions and venues. Come join us. Hi, everyone. This is Miguel from the Southern Florida Concierge Association with the famous, and I truly mean famous, Roberta Nedry of Hospitality Excellence here on Concierge Confidential. She is by far the expert in all things hospitality and travel. Roberta, welcome. Thank you. So good to see you in the city. You're out and about in the city. That's so exciting. We are. You like my nice little background? I like nighttime? your background. Yeah, it's a right. new Miami you're ready, shine. You're, you're ready for the nighttime talk show series. Most definitely. Larry King, watch out. Well, he's, he's retired uh, anyway. Yeah, I mean, you know, we need he's some younger anyway. blood. Who, younger who blood, right? Him? <laughs> All right. So with your extensive travel, Having the pulse on the global hospitality community, where do you see the hospitality community? Where do you see hospitality now, and what role will the concierge play in? Well, I think that the new normal and where we're going is about connections and even more about connecting. Yes, the new normal is more um, remote communication on a social level and on a work level, but I think that there's a professional side, the external side, and I also think there's the personal side and the internal side that is going to tap into all these different aspects and facets of the hospitality industry and our concierge. Yes, we're going to be out wearing our buffs, and here's one of my buffs. Uh, notice the word on it. Survivor. Survivor. Good, good, good. Survivor. So yes, um, we have the new fashion statements and it is going to possibly be the end of some of our most beloved treasures, the handshake, the smile, the uh, single, double or triple uh, kiss on the cheek, depending on where you're from. Um, things we hold so, so very dear, our body language are going to change but new things are going to start happening and new ways of communicating. Um, the priority may be FaceTime versus in person, but what can we do with that FaceTime and how do we connect more? Um, maybe the concierge and the front desk will be bypassed and check-in will be happening. That trend was happening as it was already, but eventually, they're still gonna need a live person. And when that live person happens, how safe are you make me, making me feel? How um, comfortable are you making me feel with or without a mask? Are little droplets gonna be flying through the air? And what have you done? And if our temperatures are being checked on your side or on my side, what's there to be done about that? And uh, that live person needs to have that extra level of reassuring. And I loved the interview you did with uh, Cece Velasco. And I loved her analogy that she said that, hey, remember when we didn't wear seatbelts and we had to get used to wearing seatbelts and the ding on the seatbelts? Well, there's a lot of new things that we're going to have to um, get used to. So um, I really value that point of view in that we have to be accepting of transition. For the concierge community specifically, when I've done programs with our group in South, Southern Florida and all over, one of the things I always talk about is the concierge's skill set. And I've even used this slide, I can share with you later, um, about the skill sets of the concierge, which in my mind present an unbelievable opportunity for our squad out there. Why? Building relationships, written and verbal communication problem solving, creative thinking, empathy and perceptivity, coping and flexibility, resourcefulness and initiative, service orientation. Oh my goodness, are those the kinds of skill sets that we need right now? Their eyes, the concierge eyes, your eyes may be some of the most valuable windows to the world that we have right now. So pretty powerful stuff. Very powerful stuff. Now, all said, do you feel honestly that the concierge will still have a viable role in the future of hospitality in hotels? I think not only viable, but critical with one caveat. 
step up to the plate, folks. Step up to the plate. Those skills that I just shared are not great if I just tell you about them, you appreciate them, you feel good about them, but you don't do anything with them. You don't show off those skills and what you can do. Um, in terms of uh, the, you know I've always sung the song of the, how much the concierge contributes to profitability um, of, of the hotel. And that's maybe jumping ahead to your next question, if that's okay. Sure. It, with, the, with, the, with the revenue stream. But um, the concierge, if I said it was earlier, and I truly believe this is about connections and connecting, the concierge has an unbelievable network of connections and connecting and pulling people in. Um, they have an eye and ear to the world. Uh, I, you were asking about hospitality industry around the world. Uh, there's one, a, a concierge in Stockholm that publishes a blog and he's constantly sharing what's going on with the seasons and the updates on the museums. There's so many opportunities there. And the fact that we may be using our concierge services remotely, that's not new either. Funny thing is, there's been a lot of remote concierge services abusing that privilege and using our name and using the concierge word, word in a way that's not justified to the high level of service. So all of a sudden now, we need that, that service-minded professional. We need that spirit of welcome, that ambassador um, and that guide. Management's going to need a lot more help with problems and problems they don't even know about. They're going to need people who are fluid. I love seeing Ernesto Aragon from um, the Chef Concierge over at the Biltmore. Ernesto is stocking shelves. He's vacuuming the hallways. He has shown how valuable he is, how much of a team player he is on so many facets. And if you're having to pick and choose employees and perhaps uh, start minimizing your teams to be more effective with all this remoteness going on, who better than the concierge to pull in? Who better can communicate not only with guests, but with employees and helping them adapt and help, help them have um, that fluidity? And so I see unbelievable opportunities for the concierge to become and zero in, zing in, and be even more powerful and more critical to management and to the old team. One other thing I might add on there, and this is another proactive thing, we are, with all this remote stuff, going to be craving uh, human interaction more than ever. So on your websites, on all social media, there should be a giant human button. Push this button. Click this button to get to the live human being, the real person, and have the concierge, have the concierge be ready to be the facilitator of, of emotional engagement on those um, um, social media hotspots. Interesting. I never looked at it from that, that perspective. So definitely we have to put on various hats and be a little bit more functional other than just giving directions and giving maps and so on and so forth. Way more. Yeah, understood. Another so, one, uh, one other, may I share one other please. point on that? Um, another thing too is I think vendors are going to be changing and evolving. Uh, we've seen, uh, you know, people are, are craving what, you know, I don't want to be stuck in my house all day. What else can I do? So people are getting back out on the, on the, on the water when they're, when they're allowed to, or on the intercoastal or in their pools or wherever it is. So what other, uh, the paddleboard business has gone up, the bicycle business has gone up. W what other vendors can the concierge now be a liaison for and facilitate relationships with that will add more value to the hotel environment and to the environment surrounding that hotel. Correct. So, so more of an active participation outdoors since they've been uh, cocooned so, for so long. Almost every doctor I've either talked to or heard about lately says, people, you need more vitamin N. Vitamin N, nature. Go outside. Go outside. Figure out what there is to do that allows you safely to breathe in the environment. Okay. So looking into your crystal ball, where do you foresee the future for hotels, travel industry in general, including the airlines, cruise lines? How, in your mind's eye, what do you think is going to be the progressive process for it to happen, be it a month, a week, uh, six months, a year at most? 
Well, again, I, I think people are, we, we've gone through our quarantine period. We've all been biting our nails and trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, you know, it's impacted all of us in so many ways. Uh, you know, uh, I have a senior high school graduating, I have a father in the hospital. There's been all these new ways of communicating. And I think that back to my very first point, connecting, communicating and connections, but connecting emotional engagement is going to be the crystal ball super prize, the lottery winner, because we need to figure out in these environments what is going to make us um, feel more safe. Behavioral skills, so whether it's cruise lines, airlines, whatever, behavioral skills, the people that can reassure, the people that can reduce anxiety, the people that if we're doing it remotely or via FaceTime or be Zoom meetings, tone of voice, the way in which we inflect and share, we're gonna be able to do emotion in so many other levels. And we need to be really good at transitions. So say I get bold enough to go on a cruise or go to South Beach or on a hotel, where was I coming from? How did I get there? And then what's gonna happen when I'm there that's safe? So the staff or employees or concierge involved need to be really hyper, super sensitized onto every step of the experience and how to facilitate easy, comfortable uh, transitions and make sure there's continuity. So uh, that's part of my thought on how this is going to evolve in terms of what will be essential going forward. So end result, you feel that the concierge is still a viable, a viable tool in the hospitality community is not going the way of the payphones, beepers, and dinosaurs, correct? No, and I'm gonna um, even correct your sentence. I don't feel that it's the concierge is still viable. I think the concierge has a rocket ship opportunity to launch into more value, um, be refreshed in terms of the skill set that they have now, be more powerful than ever, recognize how much significant aspect they can play in every facet of this, whether it's comfortably explaining directions and which buttons to push on, on an iPad, which I have found so many people don't know how to do, and how to make people feel comfortable in whatever small, big, intimate setting they can be in. Um, one of my favorite, 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 favorite things in the entire world is people may not remember what you say, people may not remember what you do, but they always remember the way in which you make them feel. And our concierge community and our extended hospitality community has the power to make people feel okay through all of this. It's not gonna necessarily be excitement like we had before. We need to now feel okay, safe. We need to feel like we can still have our joy. We can still have our celebrations, have our moments. And the concierge I see as an absolute conduit to that success. Well said, well said. I'm inspired. Are Thank you? you. Go, Most go definitely. Out go out and do it. <laughs> Most go definitely. Do Can't it. wait to get and started then, all over again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So So you have any plans in future travel? Anything set up? Uh, uh, well, I plan to have a lot of vitamin N. Um, I, we just had a little bit of a celebration for my son for, for, for high school. Um, and he's going to be going to California for college. So I'm going out to California. I'm going out there. And Tell California, out there California is your hometown, isn't it? It is my You're hometown. From California. My hood, and everybody better be ready because I'm coming back. There you go. There you go. Well, thank you very much, Roberta. Roberta Nedry from Hospitality Excellence, by far the premier global awesome. expert on hospitality and all things concierge. Thank you very much. And I wish you all the best and be safe. Thank you. I, I love our group and I love our community and believe in yourselves. Never stop believing and go for it. Our goal is to inspire travel. We want to expose you to what Miami and South Florida has to offer. From Key Biscayne to Coconut Grove, South Beach to Calle Ocho and everywhere in between. Miami is a vibrant city and offers a wide array of popular attractions and venues. Come join us.